There was a little girl in the slum, and she was probably like three years old. Um, and we just noticed her walking down through the houses in this like kind of mud area. And she had this water bottle that was clearly from, um, I don't know if it was from, well, she had a plastic water bottle, but she had gone to the river behind this community to fill it up with water from the river. And she had, it looked like chocolate milk. Literally, it was like she was drinking a bottle of a water bottle filled with chocolate milk and she would drink it and she would kind of spit it back out onto her dress and then she would take another sip and spit it back out and we actually heard this from people in ethiopia as well i remember seeing a bunch of kids huddled around this little like swamp and sometimes they say we're so thirsty that we just need to wash our mouth we know this water is too bad for us to drink but we're so thirsty during the day we can sometimes just walk up to a puddle scoop up some water and put it in our mouth just to fill the feeling of water and then we'll spit it back out we've seen kids who have had leeches stuck to the back of their throat in ethiopia because they'll drink water that has leeches in it tiny little baby tiny worms and then those leeches will get stuck in their throat and the parents tell us that they have to use a stick to try to get the leech off of the inside of the 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 child's throat or sometimes they have uh we've heard stories of parents giving tiny amounts of gasoline or diesel fuel to their children to gargle with to kill the leech that's stuck in inside their throat children are gargling diesel fuel to kill a leech in their throat yes i mean rare but happens in in specifically we've heard of it in ethiopia because there's no clinic you can go to there's no medicine you can take and the worst thing is you don't want that parasite to go down further into your stomach and make a home there so you got to get it out Uh, but yeah The leech problem is a big one. I think we had the same level of incredulity with that. And you hear that story (sighs) time and time again. And the parents say, well, listen, we'll try to use a stick first. But if we don't actually kill the leech with the stick, it'll just crawl back up again. So if we dislodge it. So diesel fuel is a way to kill a small leech. And to them, it's like, yeah, we know that's not good. But we, we know that our child will survive drinking a little bit of fuel or gargling with some fuel and the leech if it's left alone will just continue to suck blood get larger and larger and then will block the throat so that's a greater risk so there's a, there's a high awareness that this is not great yeah you know the stuff that we've seen i mean vic and vic and i have both been in communities where the the largest fear around the water source is crocodile attacks you're kidding crocodiles freaking well, crocodiles because they're sharing the river that crocodiles are using and crocodiles will drag people who are at the shore the banks of a river into the river as food are these kids or are these adults well they don't let that they don't they don't let the kids um and you know again so the first time you hear that you're like haha no way it's well, like it's, oh, it's sorry, sorry, somebody, somebody somebody committed suicide because they dropped their water uh you hear dozens and dozens of different communities different rivers different countries crocodile attacks and they start naming oh oh yeah sarah um or uh midam you know, came here and was dragged off. They, they specifically will name the women who were dragged off by crocodiles. And then in a lot of these sources, they'll, they'll drag a bunch of kind of light branches to the side and try to create a little area and an early warning system. So like a little cove that the women will walk into the river. And if any of those branches start moving, they know there's a croc in the water and then they run out. Are the men so, like the, so the, yes, are the men the ones not getting? Because you keep question. mentioning women, you talk about a so thirteen-year-old girl. Always the women in in the seventy-two countries that I have been to uh, around the world, I have never experienced men culturally getting water. It is always the role of the women and girls. The men at best are farming, or they're working with livestock, or they're working in a factory. They're trying to provide income for food. <clears throat> and it's always the women, whether I'm in Africa or India or Southeast Asia or Central and South America, it's the women's role to go get the water. So this puts women and girls at risk, risk of crocodile attack, risk of hyena and lion attack, risk of rape. We hear many stories of gender violence of uh, a 13 year old girl who's walking five or six hours, uh, sometimes you know through the forest, uh, sometimes out in a desert and will be will be raped on that walk because she's far away from home. So, you know, the women are typically always trying to walk in in at least pairs. You know, again, this is is an issue. I mean, you know, Vic was, I think, represents a lot of people. You don't really think about this issue. I mean, we're born in a world where we 
clear water comes out of taps it's like air right like when i think about water to me it's like oh it's just kind of everyone has clean water just like i have air to breathe it just seems like yeah. a to think about somebody that doesn't have that it just blows my mind it always well, has here, here's, it always a, here's has. a fun exercise for anybody listening uh count your taps so in your house so we had a, we had oh, a guy gosh. who works with me and he okay. went to africa and he lives in not not far from here three bedroom house okay. call it a 1600 square foot very modest house he came back and he counted 17 taps 17 places in his small three bedroom where clean water comes out. And if you really think about it, right? We have the refrigerator, we have the dishwasher, we have the washing machine, we have a couple garden hoses, every bathroom, you've got your sink, your shower, yeah. your toilet. We we just have clean water, you know, running everywhere. Yeah. Um, bigger homes, 100 taps. And a tenth of the world, 700 million people don't have one. 